I was just telling this to my girls how disappointed I was after the Nashville shooting, how they asked Biden to come down and, and, and uh, share some words in a very somber moment in, in our country where three Christian kids and three adults, teachers, were shot in the school. And he comes down with a happy-go-lucky attitude talking about, I heard there's some ice cream down here. They told me to come down because there's ice cream. You like chocolate chip? Hey, buddy reporter, the best reporter in the country, man. Make some noise for this guy. It's a somber moment. And you're talking about I'm down here from ice cream? And then, and then the hearts, and then the hearts uh, and, and souls and thoughts and prayers are with the trans community. Listen, uh, listen to the trans community. Do what you want to do. Knock yourself out. But at that moment, it wasn't about the trans community. It was about three Christian kids mm -hmm. and three teachers that got killed in, in that school. It wasn't to defend Instead of defending the Christian community, they're defending who? The trans community. So it's, it's I was and, very and disappointed only, in our leadership. I was too. And the only shining light in that situation at all was the incredible response. Michael Calazzo, United States From Marine, cop. The, absolutely. And, you know, I said, and I, I posted on my page, I'm like, the, the Uvalde PD needs to take notes on this. I mean, yeah. that was a, that was as perfect of a tactical response as I've probably ever witnessed on a body cam. And, not waiting 30 minutes for orders. They just went around right to the damn school, you just go. strap up. You just, you just go. That's, that's what we're, we, that's what grownups are supposed to, to do. do. That's just right. Go. There that's is it. nothing more precious than children. Hello. And so you, you know, body be damned, injury be damned, death be damned. Look, could you, could you imagine a better way to die? F for real. Because at some point in the your defending, in, at some point people. at some point That's in right. your adult life, you have to figure out what you're willing to die for. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, I couldn't imagine a better way to die than in defense of children. I just couldn't. You die for a cause. You lay down as a coward. So no, no qualms, no hesitation. Go in. Yep. Yep. Done. Okay. Clearing the and you saw the body cams. You're cleaning the rooms. Boom, boom, boom. Strategic, ex communicating, yeah. executing. But then you ask me, what? Why do I need to take that doorways and corners class? Hello. What if you're a parent? Yeah. That happens to be there. Yep. What if the what if the response is ten minutes away, which yep. could happen? What if that school doesn't have an SRO, mm -hmm. which could happen? Yep. What if you're the parent in the pickup line? Yep. Yep. Well, you grab that gun and go. That's right. Yep. And you're not and running back to your you, car. But, it's and on you, you took that doorways yeah. and corners class, so you know what? You have a better chance of not getting your face shot off. Yep. That's go it. in. Go That's get it. your kids. Go get everybody else's kids. That's what we do as grown-ups. We're supposed to protect kids. We're supposed to not hesitate and go in. And so this this was the, a great response to a terrible situation, and then the president just bungled it. Bungled it. Yeah. And, the, and the press secretary bungled it. Getting called out. Just so disappointed. And the rest of the world, <laughs> that's why we got you. That's yeah. why we can talk about de-dollarization. That's why we can trade other currencies versus American dollar. That's why we can conspire to conspire. And then they know they that they're and they know that they're influencing young people like David Hogg and, and these kids that are walking out in protest of firearms. Um, you know, they know that they're influencing them, and yeah. those are the people that are gonna chip away at the Second Amendment. So we may not see it in our lifetime, but I'm telling you, it's in danger. Yeah. It's an incredible danger. Let's uh, Jordan, let's take a look at uh, the first video we want your reaction to, Jira. Um, which is the uh, which which video is it, Jordan? The um Bring up the, uh, you're, you're, you have no right to have a gun. Let's take a look at this. I oh, can't wait. Okay, you have no right to have a gun. Let's take David a Hogg, who famously got into Harvard because he was present at Parkland when the mass shooting occurred. He uh, was rejected from Harvard, and then he reapplied based on the mass shooting and the fact that, that he was a prominent activist, and, and then he got in. And uh, he tweeted out, you have no right to a gun. You are not a militia. When you're talking about your Second Amendment rights, you're talking about a state's rights to have what is today the National Guard. The modern interpretation of the Second Amendment is a ridiculous fraud pushed for decades by the gun lobby. Well, I'm, first of all, amused to see that David Hogg has become not only a pillow magnate, but also a constitutional scholar in his time at Harvard. This is a lie. That's a lie. You do, in fact, have a right to a gun. And the militia is not, in fact, the nationally run National Guard. Militias at the time of the founding were, in fact, rather informal gatherings of people within the states, all of whom owned guns in their homes. So... He's just wrong on the facts about all okay. of this. But my favorite so, thing about so, David Hogg. So for those of you that don't know us, you're watching the Millionaire Goals podcast for the very first time. Uh, Milton here uh, was a former police officer. Uh, I, was, I served in the United States Marine Corps for eight years. Jerry here, you're currently in the state, uh, Texas State, um, state Guard. Yes. Okay. So you have, you're, you're looking at a panel here of people who are entrepreneurs, people that love God, people that love 
our freedoms, and in this case, one of the freedoms is being taken away from our Second, our second Amendment uh, rights. Your reaction to uh, Ben Shapiro and, and uh, you know, that, that clip? I love how this kid thinks he's going to start a revolution against the Second Amendment when he can't probably start a lawnmower. <laughs> okay, so that's that's the issue here and and i follow him and i look at a lot of his stuff he's so ignorant my friend i have a good friend mm -hmm. who had two daughters that went to that same school during that same shooting and do you know what he did after sandy hook he went to the school he took his kids to the school and said if this goes down here mm -hmm. this is what you do and you know what he taught me he taught them about escape he taught them about concealment versus cover he taught them, because since they can't take weapons to school, he said, this is the best education I can give you. And he, Defense. And he, yeah. I mean, he beat it into them. Yeah. At, quizzed them about it over dinner. Yeah. All this stuff. And then the community turned against him because all the parents are like, you're scaring our kids, you're scaring our kids. Guess whose kids survived that shooting? His kids. kids. Guess whose kids got other kids out? His kids. Wow. Okay? So you tell me, do you want to be like my friend's kids or do you want to be like David Hogg? Do you see what I'm saying? So, yes, you do have a right to a gun. But you know what? There are people in, in this country and in this world that are going to get guns that shouldn't have them. Welcome to life. It is life. Being alive is inherently risky. Right. And I'm not going to give up my freedom to be able to defend myself against people who shouldn't have guns. Right. I'm not going to impede people who should have guns yep. in order to, for the, the small portion of people yep. who are going to use them unwisely. Yep. But it all comes back to the education. You can literally round robin this thing all day long. You can beat around the bush all day long. You can argue all day long. And it's all going to come back to the fact that the people that don't want you to have guns are always going to impede your education. Yeah. And they're never going to say you should be educated. So when I, when I testified at the gun rights hearings at Brookhaven College in 2018, I testified before our House representatives. And I told them... And I'll send you my testimony. You can watch sure. it later on. Yeah. It's like three minutes long. And I told them, I was like, I've gone back through every single one of your social medias for the last two years. That's a legislative cycle. Correct. And not one time have any of you, even those of you who have run on a Second Amendment platform, yep. none of you have ever gone public and said to the citizens of your district, go get a gun education, go support your local gun range, go find a trainer and learn how to use a gun and get a ballistics education and learn how to use a holster and learn how to draw from that holster. Like, go take a doorways and corners class. None of you have done it because it's too politically controversial yep. and, you're, and you're wusses. <laughs> you're freaking wusses because you won't come out and say it. Yeah. And then you won't. If I was to run for office, you wouldn't elect me because I would say it. Bam. And that takes all your power away and yeah. puts the power back with the people. And that's not what you want. What's, what's your thoughts on this, Milton? I mean, uh, you're, you're a former cop. Um, you're, 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 you're a guy that's strapped. You know, you, you love your weapons. I love my weapons. My, my wife loves her weapons. What's your thoughts? I can't top that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't top that. No, but... Uh, I, d I definitely think a, a lot. A lot of these people. I, I feel that there's there's a massive agenda, and I think going back to one of these uh, articles that we were reading, um, there there is a massive amount of people who are heavily purchasing their weapons. I think a lot of them are also, if you can maybe you know also speak on this, a lot of people are probably scared at, of their potential Second Amendment being affected by the, these massive movements that are starting to happen nowadays, where people are trying to remove that amendment or trying to negate what you know what uh, weaponry mm. weaponry is yeah, inside of each household. I do believe that you know having proper training, having the proper here's a, here's the thing also, um, as, as you said, better education, better training is definitely something that people should have. And unfortunately, as you said too, welcome to life. We, we don't have full control on who gets their hands on weapons. There is a black market. There is things going on out there that we the bad just guys always get the guns. We, we can't control that. We, we can't yeah, control how's that, that drug war going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. We can't control that. <laughs> yeah, you know. So even if we do go to the extent of going into deeper background checks and you know getting you know the records of their psych valves and you know, ha having higher security in schools, there's always going to be a risk to everything that we do in life. And I think why not take advantage of what we have in our amendments that we have now and be able to put ourselves and our ch future children or children in a position to be able to protect themselves at all costs. If you think that we are not dangerously close yeah. to losing the Second Amendment in this country, you're crazy. And we, we saw it play out in Venezuela. Venezuela used to have a, a, a populace of gun owners. Mm -hmm. They banned guns. Mm -hmm. And then you saw a few years ago... They became the end. They used to be an economic power, maybe not the uh, economic power. Massive amounts of they, natural resources in had Venezuela. Tons, massive. Okay, they banned guns. 
Venezuela became poverty stricken. Mm -hmm. And then when people tried to provide humanitarian aid, Venezuela's own government fired upon its citizens for accepting humanitarian Mm -hmm. aid. Is that what you want? Because I'm telling you right now, as a parent, I don't know if you're a parent, but I know you're a parent. Parents are dangerously close to legislating themselves out of being able to protect their kids because only force stops force. That's right. Yep. Right. And, and you're gonna and they're gonna mess around and they're gonna legislate away their rights to actually physically protect their children and then they're gonna have to co-parent with the government. Yeah. And what and then what happened during COVID? What became very 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 valuable during COVID? Bullets, baby. <laughs> exactly. Bullets, baby. Nobody was talking about Second Amendment then. Because yeah. right, I mean, right gold here. and silver yeah. took a hike. It was bullets. <laughs> bullets, and I can't tell you how many people were hitting me up. Hey, can I buy some ammo off you? Absolutely, the hell not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been telling you to buy bullets in bulk. These some of these people have been students of mine for five, seven, ten years. Yeah. I told you to start buying it in bulk. You didn't listen to me. It's yeah. like it's like not listening to your financial advisor yeah. about your money. Yeah, and the market's crashing. Yeah, like why would you? Why would yeah. you not do the things that I'm telling you to do? Yeah. If you took a loss, you took a loss because you didn't take action. Um, and, you know, I, I ran. They take away guns from their citizens. And, they're, and you saw what happened when that young lady got killed in prison because she, don't, she was wearing her uh, hijab yeah. the right way and how the women felt oppressed in Iran. And nobody can have a gun. They're throwing rocks. They're throwing everything else. And the morality police is rounding people up. And here's the sad part. This, this is another topic on the podcast. But people there protesting now are in jail and now they're looking to execute the people that are protesting that government you look at what happened to uh germany what did it, what did uh, adolf hitler do to that country they mm-hmm. took away the guns and then they took away everybody else's rights you know you're in a concentration camp mm. world but war ii you, you, yeah. so, you hit the nail on the absolute head when when we talk about there don't think that they they won't take it away don't think that they won't come after it and don't think that they won't imprison you for yeah. it. And so the to Dave to David Hogg, it's not about your right to have a gun or for your self-defense or whether or not it's an AR. It's about a tyrannical government. That's right. And and what's the biggest quote about history is hey, if you're not paying attention, it's gonna repeat itself right. and you're gonna suffer for it. That's right. And we have uh, we have half a population of America that isn't paying attention. You don't want a big government. And sadly, right now the current state, the biggest employer in America is the, the federal government. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.